OpenAI think they might have come with a resolution um, to the huge problem large language models um, and AI have caused for intellectual pop property rights and copyright. OpenAI announced a new tool that will give artists control over their data. The tool is called a media main is called Media Manager. It will be released in 2025, which will allow content creators to opt out their work from companies, companies' AI development. They'll be working closely with these creators, content owners, and regulators to develop the tool. So the, J, the background is that a, uh, OpenAI is getting sued left, right, and center for having trained its AI models on data not owned by them, specifically data with um, you, in YouTube, and that they have never consent to use in this manner. Yeah. What do you think this means? Well, basically, and this is the weird thing, but again, it's sucking up all the info. Um, because is it fair, like, we can read info, That's we can read articles that aren't our creation, interpret them and regurgitate it, but it becomes unfair when OpenAI can read one article every millisecond and learn it verbatim. <laughs> and just suck it into its language model and then act like it came up with it. Um, so it sparked, I mean, there's been authors that have sued them, content creators, uh, news agencies, the New York Times has sued them. There's a couple others that are jumping on that same bandwagon. Um, and it's purely for that same thing as Josh mentioned, training itself on data, um, especially YouTube, without um, adhering to, I guess, fair use policy yeah yeah either fair I had, a, I, had, I, had a, I had a thought about this when mm. i was looking at some of the ai stuff and i think that until ai becomes intuitive i don't think you can call it intelligent mm. yeah i actually you know the amount of people that are throwing around the acronym ai um it's it's becoming a bit much <laughs> it's becoming like fucking uh bitcoin or crypto. It's like everyone's throwing it around. Meanwhile, even the best AI system is not even AI. It's AGI. <laughs> Don't have AI yet. Yeah. Because um, when you think about trying to train these models to do certain things and trying to express the ways that you want to do them, look, they're fantastic tools. Don't get me wrong. I think they've helped a whole lot of people, content creators, authors, people like me, people in all sorts of businesses and mm. all that jazz. The only thing that remains is one of the tool that I use loses memory quite fast. As soon as you get to the 40th day of trying to keep the same standard prompt going, mm. it loses yields. It sometimes gets mixed up with certain things and it's blah, blah. I wish, I hope, my estimation is that as if AI became, became intuitive to basically move and work together with an intuition based on as prompt that's when i think it would become intelligent because if it if it can solve if it can plug in for intuition it's something that only a human being can have and that's how i think you can dissociate between an ai and a human being is based on your intuition now people have varying degrees of intuition but when you see a kid in the side of the road and you see a car coming your intuition is to chase after that kid and pick it up and move it around. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas a compute would go, ah, there's a child. Do I have any data models that suggest what I should do with this child in the middle of the road? Now, if there's no plugin that states that I should remove the kid from the road for health and safety purposes, that robot ain't going to do shit, man. So mm. it's the plugin, the, the previous data to, mm. to manage its task. But we all know this. We all know what it's like to come from fear. So mm. until it becomes highly intuitive, mm. I think it's still artificial data re regurgitation. It's fantastic tools. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I actually adore it. I pay for some of these guys. Mm. It's very, very good. Mm. But I don't think it's intuitive. Mm. And and that's a good so thing. I think you should replace the word in, in, intelligence with intuitive or intuition, right? Artificial intuition. Mm. Yeah. That's actually a very good, but very... Fucking hell, Joshua! Hey!
All that sun in America it made such a big difference, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I just, mean, like mm. you just you just think about it in in a logical sense. Like if if I take this cup and it's super super hot and I pass it to my lips, I'm gonna and I and I just look at the steam. I know intuitively that I've got to be careful mm. to take it really slowly. Now, mm. if I had a robot feeding me hot water, it's not going to know what the fucking temperature is if it doesn't have any sensors on it or it doesn't know for a fact that it has hot water in its hand. Now, here's a scary thing when you talk about intuition because it's, it's in a weird way, it's it's a good thing that, uh, that uh, AGI is not intuitive yet <laughs> because intuition, like you mentioned, certain things are motivated by fear. Most of them, actually, when it comes to intuition, is motivated by fear, which can prompt an overreaction. So, like, if you look at that child example that you gave, it could be child in the road, car coming, destroy the car! Like, like just fire fucking bl- IBMs at the car to save the child, of course. But destroy the car! Um... I was watching um, what a brilliant documentary, uh, Turning Point on Netflix. I highly recommend it, guys. But they were basically speaking on the, effectively, the, the, the Cold War that took place between the U.S. and Russia. And I want you to just think about these two events that I'm going to just mention. Um, and think about, in the context of AI, if AI had to intuitively respond to the information given to it. So in 1983, basically, um, at one of the U.S. military bases, they were surveilling some shit, and a dude got an alert on one of the radars, and it's like, hey, fuck, okay, there's a whole lot of missiles incoming from Russia. It's like, what the fuck? Okay. Double-checks the data... Um, checks it with this, cross-checks it with that, and he's now left with the decision to react to this. And the reaction to this is always retaliate and fire back as many missiles as you can. Try, and, of course, intercept what's coming in, but you need to retaliate to Russia. And this dude was on the verge of calling the president and author <laughs> and authorizing fucking nuclear attack on Russia, okay? Mm. But his common sense, not his intuition, his common sense stepped in and was like, hold on. If Russia was trying to attack us, they'd send many more missiles. They send much more missiles than this. That is the human brain intercepting logic and being like, wait, hold on. Um, Your calculations might make sense, but there's just this little human thing that doesn't line up. And he made the choice not to retaliate. And a couple seconds later, he got a call saying it was a false alarm. There was a particular chip that basically malfunctioned in the system, which caused it to tell him that Russia was attacking America. But cooler heads prevailed. Now, a couple months later, in Russia, <laughs> there's got a military surveillance post. And same thing happens. They get an alert. Hey, fuck, America's sending missiles? What? There's uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles um, about seven, 10 minutes away from hitting Russia. Now, same story. Dude's like, what? This is fucking crazy. What, 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 what? But at the time, you need to remember that the Cold War was like we mentioned at the beginning of the show. Whoever can point the biggest gun at the other side wins. So there was a whole lot of fear tactics at that time where America and Russia were playing war games. Like, I've got a big, oh, oh, I'm building this in secret. No, I'm building that and leaking information and stuff. So they were anticipating each other to attack. Russia, traditionally, much more trigger happy as Earlier that year, they actually shot down a civilian plane that strayed into Soviet airspace um, by accident. They shot, they killed like almost 300 people. But what basically happened was he double-checked the figures 
And he got the response, no, there's not five or ten. The U.S. is sending hundreds of missiles to the Kremlin, and now they're seven minutes away. And this dude, lucky enough, was a reserve watcher. <laughs> if the actual dude that was on, like, on duty that night was there and received this info, he most likely would have retaliated and we would probably not be here right now if, re- if Russia had retaliated to that false alarm. Turns out again, the system fucking malfunctioned, but it took that person's just like something in him to say, man, no. Why would they do this? Like, why? Why would they end the earth? And that basically saved the world, <laughs> was intuition. Now, I want you to think of an AI. And it, was, it wasn't artificial. It wasn't artificial. It, it was, was actual intuition. So I want you to just think of those two scenarios. America getting a false alarm and uh, contemplating attacking Russia or Russia getting a false alarm contemplating America. Introduce an AI element into that. How do you think the AI would react? Thank you for watching this clip from the OG session. For the full episode, visit the It's Friday Forever YouTube channel. Whilst you're there, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you're notified whenever we drop new content. And I'll catch you in the next one.